Friendly frat boy phosphate is large and in charge. Today we're wrapping up hyperphosphatemia. Hyper meaning high, phosphate, well, meaning phosphate, and emia in the blood. Serum phosphate levels more than 4.5 in the blood. Now, phosphate's main function is essential for bone and teeth formation. It helps regulate calcium even though they're complete enemies and always work inversely. So if calcium's high, then phosphate is low, and if calcium's low, then phosphate's high. Now, phosphate is regulated by parathyroid and calcitrol hormones, just like with calcium. But it's always inverse to calcium. Now, the main causes that add phosphate to the body are excess vitamin D, which help phosphate absorb, hyperparathyroidism, which decreases calcium release, which basically increases high phosphate. Symptoms associated with low calcium are hypocalcemia, as well as decreased excretion by the kidneys. So what's going on in hyperphosphatemia? Well, it's high, high phosphate, right? So high phosphate always means low calcium. We'll have the same signs and symptoms as low calcium. So you know when calcium goes to Mexico? Remember those two dance moves? Well, Trousseau, that tambourine dance move with basically the arm twerk when you put a blood pressure cuff, it's equally as important as hypocalcemia. So high phosphate emia, you're going to have the same thing. The next most famous one is Vostix, or basically that cheesy smile when you touch that temporal low barrier, kind of like this. And you'll also have massive diarrhea. Ooh, well, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Now, some other signs and symptoms. Our EKG is going to show prolonged ST intervals, prolonged QT intervals. Respiratory, our lungs, you'll have soft tissue hardening in the lungs. Neurologically, you'll have altered level of consciousness, confusion, and ultimately leading into seizures. GI, for your intestines, you'll have some nausea and vomiting and diarrhea, a big one right there. Because, guys, always remember, high phosphate is that low calcium. Lastly, our musculoskeletal system will have weak muscles and hyperactive reflexes, increased DTR, our deep tendon reflex. So now that we know what's wrong, what are we going to do about it? Well, it's a simple fix, really. We're just going to add calcium so we decrease that phosphate. Now, caution, keep a close eye on calcium so it doesn't go too high to the sky. So nursing interventions are we're going to add vitamin D, which helps calcium increase and phosphate decrease. We'll also add calcium supplements like antiacids or what's known as FOS low calcium acetate. We want your patients to excrete it, so we'll give loop diuretics as well as dialysis, that backup kidney that washes the blood. Or we'll dilute it. We'll give IV normal saline. As well as we'll teach your patients to avoid high phosphate foods like dairy, meats, and beans. All right, guys, that wraps it up for hyperphosphatemia or high phosphate. All right, guys, that wraps up our lesson here. We'll see you in the next video.